What's going on everyone? Thank you for watching this video. My name is Jason. If you're new to my channel, thanks for joining me on this one. I'm going to be going over a lot of items that sold for me over the last couple of weeks. I've got some really big hitters. I've got clothing, I've got hard goods, I've got a random assortment of things that I'm just going to be showing you from a wide array of brands. So stay tuned at the very end of this video, which won't be long from now. I'll be going over some of those items. And as always, I tell you as much as I can on what I've sold so that you can be looking for those certain things in the stores. You can find them, flip them, and make cash as well. That's the name of the game for me. Not only do I want to succeed in my business, but I want to help you succeed. So thank you for watching. And for those of you loyal subscribers who have been following me all along, I just want to say thanks so much from the bottom of my heart. I really appreciate your comments, your questions, and just letting me know where you are on your reselling journey. If you do have any questions at all, please leave a comment in this video and I'll do my best to answer it. And you never know, you may get a shout out on a future video where I do from time to time answer reseller viewer questions. I've got a couple of announcements I wanna go over before I get into the what's sold, so let me just take some time now to do that. One fun thing that a friend Chris and I started about three weeks ago is a live show that we do about reselling. It's called Two Flippin' Dudes and we do it every Thursday from eight Eastern to seven Central. Some of you have been watching and jumping in with us on these live shows and we've been excited to just kind of go back and forth on some questions that you've had, some comments, and just in general get to connect with other resellers out there. So if you've been joining us on these shows, thank you so much. Hope to see you there again. And if not, consider setting a reminder and joining us on our next show. Remember, no matter when you're watching this, it's every Thursday, 8 Eastern, 7 Central. Two flipping dudes, we answer questions, we talk about all things reselling, we show you items that have sold for us, items we're picking up, and we play a fun game at the end. It's a lot of fun, join us. Although this has nothing to do with YouTube, I do wanna do a quick shout out on TikTok because I just hit over 10,000 followers on my TikTok channel. If you haven't seen my TikTok channel, there's a link in the description of this video that will take you there and from there you can follow if you'd like, you can watch some videos, whatever you wanna do, you know the drill. But basically I'm putting up a lot of shorter videos because that's what TikTok is, shorter videos, 30 seconds to a minute, that are just showing my daily ins and outs of the reselling world. Post a lot of like how to's, I post what sold, and a lot of other things, in-store thrift footage. So make sure to check that out if you're interested and join us over there. At some point in videos, I usually will turn to a viewer comment that I'm getting on YouTube and post it up here and I'll answer it on these videos. And I don't have a specific one today to give you, but I wanted to touch base on a question that a lot of new resellers have been asking. What I've noticed is I'm getting a lot of comments from other fellow resellers asking me, look, I've been up on eBay for a little while and I'm not getting any traffic, I'm not selling items. I don't know what to do. How are you selling items when I'm not? Well, let me just say, there's not one cookie cutter answer for every single reseller. I mean, it, it just depends on what your listing looks like. It depends on several factors. But for those of you watching who are interested in this question, let me go through a few things that I look at when I'm creating a listing or when I'm advising people on how to set up their store or their listings, whether they have a store or not. First thing is price. Price is a huge thing. Buyers usually search by the lowest price. So if your price is way out there, it's not gonna be seen. But you could have the lowest price in the market and still not be seen. How can this be, you ask? Well, there are other things as well. Title, description, pictures, what you're selling. All of these things determine whether you're gonna be seen or not in the search results by a potential buyer. Your title needs to have as many descriptors as possible that you can think of for that item that you're selling. Obviously, they need to be accurate, they need to be timely. They need to just paint the picture of what it is you have so that the buyer understands there's no question on what they're getting or what they're buying, and you make the sale. So if I'm selling clothing, brand, size, gender, color, fabric, um, patterns, these are all things that I include. If I'm selling something else, say electronics, you wanna make sure to get the model number, the brand, possibly the color may not matter. You wanna make sure and put some specs in there on storage space or processor speed or things like that, depending on what it is you're selling. If you're not sure what to put in the title, do some other sold comp research, see what other people are listing it at, get some ideas there. Don't copy the titles exactly, but put some of those bits and pieces in your title and fill up that whole line. So that's title, that's number one. Actually, that's number two because price was number one. Let's move on to number three, which is your description. Make sure you're describing it accurately as well. Now, obviously the title is kind of laying out this exact thing, but the description is where you get to use more words. So here I would put measurements to clothing, I would put my return policy, I would put some kind of little blurb on um, how I handle customer service, I would put 
other things into the description that would be key for the buyer to know. The specifications are important for electronics and other like computer equipment, things like that. And the fourth thing is pictures. Pictures are really important because the title is what gets the person to your listing. The picture is what makes them click on it. So you may have this really well-crafted title that's accurate and really speaks to the buyer, but your pictures don't attract them into clicking. So they see yours, they scroll on by, and they click on the next one. Your pictures need to stand out. They need to have a popping color on whatever the item is that it shows the color of the item. Whether it's clothing or electronics or something else, it needs to stand out. The more professional your pictures are, the more likely that someone's gonna click on your item. If you look like someone who just pulled it out of the closet, threw it on the carpet and snapped a photo and it's somewhat blurry, there's a great chance that they're gonna interpret that as you're not as professional, so they're not gonna buy from you, meaning you're more risk. And you wouldn't believe how many people will do stuff like this. They throw it on their couch, they snap a photo, and they're done. Let me suggest, if you're not already, use eBay's white background tool or some kind of tool to help get white backgrounds. Even if it's not that pure white background that eBay gives you, put it in front of a white door or something that will help it stand out a little more than just on your couch. That's how I started off and it worked for me until, I, until eBay's white background tool came along and now I've started using that. So price, title, description, pictures. Those are four things to help generate traffic to your listing. And the last thing, number five, promoted listings, will obviously push your items up to the top of search results but you're gonna pay for it. So if you're not promoting your listings, something to consider. Those key five things will help drive traffic to your listings, and from there, you've gotta do the rest to make the sale. It's a cold, rainy day here in Arkansas, and I've got my hot tea, Bengal Spice, for those who are curious, Celestial Seasonings, shout out Boulder, Colorado, in my Zion mug. Never been to Zion. Actually, it's on my list. We would love to go to Zion. I just thought this mug was cool, so I bought it at a thrift store. And the last thing before we get into some items that sold for me in the last two weeks, let me just say that if you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments of this video or any video really, and I will do my best to respond as quickly as possible. And there's a chance you may get answered on another video. So with that being said, thank you faithful, loyal watchers for jumping in on this video and let's go ahead and get into what you wanna see, the items that sold for me over the last two weeks. All right, I'm gonna be looking here because that's where my screen is, but I promise I'll come back to you from time to time. All right, we're gonna start off with the items that sold more recently. So these first few items sold today and we'll move to the older items as we go along. So let's go ahead and do this now. We'll kick out this first video with a non-clothing item just because I've been picking up more of these lately. And this item actually was my most recent sale today. I got $44 on this plate set, or this bowl set, sorry. The brand was Totally Today, and they were a lighthouse themed bowl there. You can see the print is a phenomenal print. Most of these were in great condition. There, I think, was one that had one, yeah, here you can see has one minor chip, and there it is, but it wasn't anything that was overly um, horrible or damaged. It was just a small chip on the underside. But totally today, there's the bottom for you, if you can see that. That was the brand, and I just based on what um, that little mark there in the bottom, I didn't think these would be worth anything, just because that, to me, looked like a cheaper brand. But in reality, I ended up picking these up. So I had five bowls, uh, picked them up for $1.25 a piece at a local thrift store here, and they sold today for $44. So I'll profit about $20 to $25 on these bowls once I pay for shipping and all the fees associated. With that being said, I, I've been looking more and more for sets, and I've been saying this a lot, but if you're new to my channel, look for sets, mugs, bowls, plates. You can get a combo of all those, salad plates. If you have the same pattern, that's what I'm looking for. And I try and sell it as a set, five pieces, 10 pieces. I usually don't try and go over eight to 10 because it gets pretty heavy to ship, and the more pieces you throw in a box, the more, better chance you have of it breaking. So I'm usually trying to stick around in that like four to eight piece set. But if I do buy a set that's say 20 pieces, I'll break it off into like four listings and sell them th that way. So I, I've been having a lot of success with sets and that last one was a good sale. All right, this next item, Brooks Brothers, does sell to women, believe it or not. This was a women's quilted, um, quilted polyester vest. It was in great condition. There's the tag there, Brooks Brothers. 
Men's and women's sell really well, and I pick this stuff up all the time, as long as it's a newer item in better condition. I got $40 for this total with shipping. So this was a great sale, great condition, and just shipped this out today. I threw this in there because I can never get enough Polo Ralph Lauren, even though I'm slowing down on all of the Polo Ralph Laurens that I pick up. This was a great sale as well. I got $35 plus eight shipping, $43 total on this men's Polo Ralph Lauren cotton sweater. Now I got that much because of the size. If this were a large, I would have gotten around 30 bucks total, but an offer came along for 35 plus shipping and I took it. And this was a men's 3XB. So great size there. The color, I mean, brown isn't bad. It's not a, it's not a great one in my opinion, but someone likes brown. I don't necessarily have to like it. And made this sale today. I'll roll that up and see if I can get into a padded flat rate envelope. And that was a great one. This was the fastest sale I've had in weeks, maybe even months. I listed this and within one hour it sold. Uh, this torrid ivory bell sleeve lace dress was woman's, women's 3X plus. It was brand new with tags and I picked it up for eight bucks in the thrift store. Uh, this picked it up last week and I actually had it in another video as well. But I'll show you, see if I can find the tag. There it is. I don't usually pick up women's, but if something is new with tags and um, I look it up in comps are great, I'll pick it up. So Torrid, uh, this is probably the first piece of Torrid that I've sold, but on this item, I got full asking price. And with this item, a woman sent a message within an hour of me listing it saying, hey, I'm in a wedding in a week and a half. Is there any chance that you can ship this out quicker to make sure that it gets here in the next few days? And I messaged back and said, sure, as long as you're willing to pay the difference in shipping, I will gladly um, sh send this out now and get it there before you, you know the wedding, before you need it. And so I asked her what her zip code was. I looked up rates real quick and I saw um, how much it would cost and I sent that to her and I just said for an extra four bucks, I can do two day FedEx and have it to you in a couple days. So she went in, purchased this item for full price, $39.79 plus 12 shipping. So that was a great sale. This next pair of pants were North Face Paramount Peak 2 convertible hiking pants and they were men's 2XL. They were new with tags. I didn't pay much for these, not like you would think for something that was new like this. I think I got them for less than uh, 10 bucks at a thrift store and they sold for me, let me see here, for a total of $48 with shipping. I sat on these for a little while and waited for that buyer to come along, waited for a good offer and 48 bucks was a great offer. So definitely took this on a brand new pair of North Face pants. At the same time and on the same rack that I got that torrid lace dress, I picked up a lot of brand new Duluth items and this was one of five or six items. They were all either new without tags or new with tags. This was one of the items that didn't have the tags but I could tell it hadn't been worn because it was sitting on the rack with all the other stuff that did have the tags. So apparently Duluth donated some stuff to Goodwill and I just happened to be there at the right moment. They, they were all 2XL, so all great sizes. And this was even like a base layer long sleeve thermal shirt. So there's not a lot of money in on those, but I got more than I thought I would. I was planning on getting 20 to 25 bucks for each of these, and this one went for $31.81. And I had two of these, so I've still got one left. And uh, yeah, great sale there. For those of you that don't know Duluth, Duluth sells really well. It's kind of like a nicer outdoor brand. I wouldn't put it in the category of like Patagonia or North Face um, or Arcturex or some of those uh, other outdoor brands as far as, um, as far as like quality. I would put it more in the brand of like people who have a little bit of money who want to kind of dress more of an outdoor casual will buy this stuff. And so there is great resale value in Duluth. And I've actually got, I think one or two more pieces later on in this video that will show you some other Duluth items that sold. So there's the brand right there, Duluth Trading Co. I usually just put Duluth in the title and that works because Trading Co. takes up too much space. Snacks brand Untuck It, there's the tag. For those of you that are new to my channel, if you've been watching me, you know I've picked up several of these and sold these. This one actually went for $36.31, which is more than what I've gotten recently on these. I've harped on these quite a bit that the prices come down to that $25 to $30 range. But every once in a while, a buyer sneaks in and pays full price. So I was very happy with that on this XL uh, black gingham check shirt. And it was even short sleeve. 
I just mentioned Arcturex, and that is a very rare outdoor brand that sells for really good money. Let me show you what the logo looks like. There's the name of the, the company, Arcturex. And they also have, if you can see on the back of the neck there, that little logo of like a skeleton. Um, I'm honestly not sure, some kind of lizard or some kind of animal, but that's kind of their logo there that they have usually on their gear somewhere, clothing, gear, whatever it is. If I can find Arcturex anything, even if it's a jacket with wear and rips, it will sell because Arcturex is very expensive when you go to buy it brand new. This shirt, I got a best offer of $35 all in, and I paid four bucks for it. So on something like that, $20 would have been my profit, and I'd be very happy with that sale. This next item, I usually don't pick up this brand, but because of what this was is the reason why I picked it up. This is Lauren Ralph Lauren, and it was 100% pure wool button-up shirt. It was women's, and it was small, so I had a few things working against me there, but still, I got really good money on this. A buyer came along, made an offer for 39 plus five shipping, and I took it. This was a great shirt that had hardly any wear on it. Didn't look like it had been worn really at all. Uh, with Lauren Ralph Lauren, there are only a couple pieces that I pick up, and those would be more like your blazers, um, your sports suit jackets for men, or fancy pieces like this where it's a wool shirt. It's clearly distinguishable from other like similar button-up shirts. So on this shirt, I paid $6.50 and I got $44. Again, on something like that, about a $25 to $30 profit once you take out all the fees. This item right here is probably one of the most obscure of this 32, I think, that I have here um, that I'm showing you today. I went into a Goodwill and they were asking $2 a piece on these encyclopedias. I probably should have tried to bargain with them a little bit because that was heavy on this 18 volume set to pay 36 bucks. But I looked and there was a recent sold comp for 100 on these, so I knew if I could turn 36 into 100, that would be great profit. So I picked them up and about three to four months later, they sold for a best offer of $85, including shipping. I purposefully, for this piece, I went in and selected medium mail in the listing, so when they did sell, the shipping would be a little cheaper. And believe it or not, for this item, they weighed about 31 pounds and I was able to ship it out for about 10 bucks going five or six states away. So that was a really good sale there, $85 on $36 spent. I pocketed around $35 profit once you take out fees and that $10 shipping. And I actually didn't say this, but these were like a home decor decorating vintage set from the, from the 70s. You can see 1972 there, and they were very 70s. Take a look at that picture. But they were excellent condition. I mean, um, you can tell these have been sitting in a closet. The books all, all looked really good. The binding were good. And uh, I was glad to move those out of my closet because that's 31 pounds gone. Hey, call me the LL Bean guy. I'm okay with that because every video I have an LL Bean piece in the video and I honestly love LL Bean. This has become one of my favorite like mid-range items for clothing. It's, it's not like a lower end. It's not the high, high end. It sells in that $30 to $40 range every time I find it. And this one was no exception. This was a vintage LL Bean flannel you can see the tag right there. That's a vintage tag, men's large cotton. Great pattern there. This is more of a winter festive color and it, this even sold after Christmas. So I got an offer on this recently. Actually, no, this one sold, I believe for full asking price, $44.79. That is the most I've gotten on an LL Bean flannel and I'll take it. Now I've been getting a lot of questions on YouTube and TikTok because I've been posting quite a bit about LL Bean. Had several people reach out and say, what can I look for in LL Bean? Well, fancy you should ask. Let me answer that for you. First of all, I almost always pick up anything I see from LL Bean, except polos and older button down shirts that look a little raggedy. So if it's, if it's not in great condition, I pass it. I pass it on a lot of brands. But let me tell you some ideas for L.L. Bean that do sell well. L.L. Bean wool sweaters or L.L. Bean sweaters in general, uh, L.L. Bean flannels, and some even really nice dress shirts. So if you can get some great colors, they're crisp, they have the dry clean tag, they're good sizes, I would pick those up as well. So there you go, L.L. Bean for the win, $45 sale. This next brand is a great shoe brand, probably one of my favorite shoe brands to sell, 
Hoka 1-1. These were the Bondi Sixes. So funny story about that, my wife and I were shopping this weekend. She was trying on some new Hokas that she was gonna get for running and she tried on the Bondi 7s and as she was trying on the Bondi 7s, I got this offer for the Bondi 6 and I definitely took it. I got this buyer up to 53, 53 all in on a best offer and I ended up making about $30 profit. So if you can find Hoka, Bondi's, Clifton's, Mafate Speed, there's some other ones out there. There are a lot of different styles that I don't remember all of them right now, but Hoka in general sells well. So be on the lookout for Hoka, um, even shoes that have some wear. I wouldn't pick up shoes that have holes in them, but if it's got like the soles have been worn and clearly someone's running them for 400 miles, you, you can still list and sell them. And that was the case with these. The, the soles did have some wear on them and still got $53 for them. All right, I am starting to move on these Cole Haan um, travel kits that I picked up. I got about 50 of these and I mentioned these in the past. I had some orange ones and those sold out and I've got about 20 of these yellow ones and they have just been sitting. And finally, I've gotten two or three sold in the last few weeks. This one went for 12 bucks all in. But here's the deal, I only paid 10 cents a piece on these and I bought 50 at the time, so $5 spent. I've made well over the five bucks in profit and I still have about 20 left. So once these sell, they're lightweight, first class into a poly mailer, and it's about uh, $4 to ship. So I only make about five bucks a piece on these, but when you multiply that by 50, on my $5 spent, I end up making about 250 profit on all of these once they all sell. I guess I didn't really talk about what's in those, and those are just basically like, um, like a, an airline travel bag they hand out in first class. Some, somehow a thrift store here had a bunch of them. It's got like socks, lotion, a toothbrush, a face mask, things like that you would need when you're traveling. So um, definitely starting to sell those yellow ones and hopefully they'll all sell out soon. This next brand, Nat Nast. I've talked about Nat Nast in the past. Talked about Nat Nast in the past. And here is the label for those of you who are new to this brand. Let me see if I can get it to pull up there. Especially when you can find that tag that says Luxury Originals. I'm not sure actually if they all say that or not, but I've just happened to find ones that say Luxury Originals and I put that all of it in the title. Nat Nast Luxury Originals. This is more of a casual wear shirt. This was a silk blend. And on this shirt, I ended up getting $35 with shipping on something I paid four bucks for. So great flip here. And this took less than two or three weeks to sell. Talk about one of the cool items of this video. This was a vintage Banana Republic 1980s like photographer's type safari vest. And look at this tag. I have never seen a Banana Republic tag that looks like that. I didn't know it was from the 80s. I honestly did not know how old this was until I looked up comps and found some similar items with that same tag, same piece and they had 80s in the title, so I was able to go ahead and list that there as well. This was a great vest. I picked it up for a few bucks and flipped this into, hear me out, $58, including shipping, within a month or two of listing. I was somewhat concerned about this red color. I didn't know if that burnt red or burnt orange would sell, but it did. In 58 bucks, this is gone, and that was a great flip. Ended up profiting about $40 on this uh, vintage Banana Republic vest. Bugle Boy. Do y'all remember Bugle Boy? I remember when I was a kid, my mom would take me to like these factory outlet stores. We didn't have a lot of money and we would shop at the Bugle Boy stores and that would be the clothes that I would wear. <laughs> that seems like such a long time ago. But I was at the Goodwill Benz recently and I picked this up for a couple of bucks. It was just a Bugle Boy hoodie and you can see the kind of the graphic and the spell out there on the front. I honestly didn't know if this would sell. There's obviously a vintage following right now and a lot of people are trying to get clothing from their childhood and uh, I just wasn't sure. I looked comps up on this really quickly while I was in the store and saw there were some people out there buying stuff like this and so I definitely took a chance on it um, for a couple bucks. And surprisingly, I actually sold this for $33 all in. So Bugle Boy, I'm not gonna tell you to pick up all their stuff but if the timing is right and you're at the right place and it's cheap enough, it's maybe the right item. Hey, maybe give it a shot. But yeah, glad I picked this up. 33 bucks, and I probably profited about 15 to 20 dollars um, after fees on this. Moving right along to the next item, White Sierra is another outdoor brand. I would put it lower 
then I would put it in the likes of like Columbia. And Columbia is kind of mainstream. White Sierra is not really mainstream even. But it, as far as like quality or as far as like uh, demand, it's kind of similar to Columbia. And I guess what I'm trying to say in that is I don't pick it up that often. But for eight bucks, I picked up these new women's ski bibs, uh, new with tags, and I knew, you know, hey, I can get at least 30 or $40 on this item. And I did. These sold for full price, $44.81 plus 12 shipping. So I got 56 bucks on an item I paid $8 for within a month of listing. We are entering ski season right now as I record this video and people are looking for jackets and pants and things like that to get for their trips. Especially families who don't wanna spend a lot of money on new gear, they'll look to eBay for used gear or new with tags gear. But here it is, 56 bucks and this was a great sale on $8 spent. I'll show you the tag, White Sierra. It looks kind of like that, but just keep in mind that um, I've had it in the, what was that? Just sold Tommy Bahama Relax Swim Trunks for $31.81, all in. Speaking of been sitting on for a long time, check that out. $31.81 on those Tommy Bahama Swim Shorts Men's 4XB. We'll add that into this What Sold video. There you go, real time. So yeah, back to what I was saying, that's the tag for White Sierra, but just keep in mind, they're slow movers and you don't get that much. So I'd be very hesitant at picking up White Sierra. Kind of like what I said with the Bugle Boy, make sure it's cheap, it's at the right time, it's the right piece, and just do some comp research before you invest in this stuff. Next up, this is my surprise sale of this video. And my surprise meaning I'm surprised it took this long to sell. This was like a year and a half to two year old item when it finally did sell. And this was a great brand. So I'm a little confused. Ah, uh, I just saw it. It's men's medium, that's why. So if you can see here this tag, this is a vintage Orvis. There it is, close up for you. Vintage Orvis piece, and the color on this, I thought, you know, by Thanksgiving this would sell. It's more of a fall color, the oranges, greens, and browns. But yeah, it took a while to sell, and I got $24 all in on this piece right here. And that brings me to my point, guys. Be very hesitant about picking up men's small and medium for reasons such like this. You can have a great brand, great item, great colors, and because it's the wrong size, it will sit. And I am really telling myself in the store while I'm there, don't pick it up if it's men, men small or medium or if it's like a smaller shoe. It's, it's, I, it's just not worth sitting that long. So I'm having to tell myself this over and over. There are only very few exceptions that I will make on those small or medium items. So yeah, $24 all in on this vintage Orvis. Still a great price, but I, my strategy is not to get something, hold it for two years and sell it for $24. Let's move it a lot faster than that. All right, great brand alert, Frank and Eileen. Let me show you the tag here. There it is, that's what the tag looks like. And this is most often found for women. I've usually found items for women and if you find them for women, I would dare say they sell faster and better than if you find them for men. I originally thought this was a men's shirt. It says medium there. I looked at the measurements and the measurements lined up more with what a, a men's shirt would be for those measurements. Couldn't really tell what was it, men's or women's. I sold it for $25 to a, a man and then shipped it out and he got it and said, hey, this is a women's shirt and sent it back. So I got it back, I rebranded it, created the new listing, women's medium, and it sold within two weeks of listing it. Do you wanna hear how much I got for it from a woman once it sold the second time? Almost twice, I got $40 all in with shipping. And that is par for the two or three of these that I have sold in the past. This Frank and Eileen Barry blouse sells around that $40 range. So don't be afraid to price those higher. Don't look at those sold comps that sold for 25 and think you have to price it at 25. Price those higher when it's a woman's Frank and Eileen and you will get that kind of money. I promise you, if it's in good condition. But there's the tag one more time and a lot of these, um, and a lot of these shirts are the Berry blouse. That's the one that sells for me um, quite well. There is some confusion on this next item on 
Pendleton. What does Pendleton sell for? If you look up comps on a wool shirt like this one, you will notice it is all over the map. You'll see shirts that sell for $20 and $25 all the way up to $50 plus. So how do you know what to price some of these items when there's such a wide range of what these shirts are going for? Well, let me just give you some advice. Some people are new to reselling and so they price things without having a clue what it's worth and they maybe don't do some comp research and so they throw it up for 25 bucks and guess what? Their wool Pendleton shirt sells for 25 bucks. Then that goes into the sold comp research and then another reseller sees it and goes, oh, this shirt is only worth 25 bucks. They list it at 25 and then it sells for 25. They're not getting the price that they could get. I priced this and got $40 all in on this shirt. It sat for a little while, but it was a smaller size. It was a men's medium and that's why it sat. Had this been a larger size, I would have gotten closer to 50 bucks on this. But I want to say in the face of sold comp research, if you're noticing a wide range like that, don't be afraid to price it on the high side and you can always accept lower in an offer if you're wanting to move it later. There are other resellers out there, as mentioned, who aren't doing the research or maybe just aren't experienced in a way to know how to appropriately value your piece. And so don't let that deter you from getting the full value. When I see something like a range like that, I price on the high side and then after some time, if there's no movement, no offers, no clicks, then I'll just drop the price. But I would rather that happen than price it way low and sell it way low. If I had sold this shirt for $20 when I couldn't got, could have gotten 40, that would have been a major bummer. So glad I got 40 on this and this Sir Pendleton wool shirt is out the dough. All right, next brand up, got a handful left. Outdoor Research is another high quality men's and women's outdoor brand. That's what the tag looks like right there. OR Outdoor Research, and you'll sometimes see OR on the back or the brand there as well. These were like nylon or let's see, nylon elastane blend hiking pants and I sold these on a best offer of $35 all in. Paid four bucks for them, so that was a great flip. Outdoor research does not disappoint. It's very rare, but when you do find it, pick it up. This next brand, Clark's, I picked up a lot of these Clark's and Cole Haan, probably six to 10 brand new shoes at a thrift store for 10 bucks a piece. They must have been donated by a department store or something. I've been selling them off and this was one of the last ones to go. I got 47.83 all in on these with shipping and that was a great flip right there from 10 into almost 50. I don't usually pick up Clarks at all, but because these were new, I picked them up. All right, got a non-clothing item for you. Found this for a few bucks, I think $5 at Goodwill about three to four weeks ago. This was a Magellan Explorist 500 handheld GPS, hence the title. Whenever I have an electronic piece that I can't test in the store, I bring it home, leave the tags on it, I test it out, and if it works, I list it. If it doesn't work, if the tags are still on it, you can take it back. So it worked great, works out for me. And this item I listed and sold for a best offer of $57. Even on a unit that is somewhat old and dated. So, I mean, this is still a great piece that someone's looking for. I mean, you can see the picture there. I don't know how old this item is, but from the box and the unit, it looks to be several years old and a little outdated on technology, but still, someone picked it up for $57. I promised you Duluth and I'm a man of my word. Here is Duluth again. Another really great piece here. This one went down the street to a buyer in Arkansas and I got $41 all in on a best offer on this very heavy lined shirt jacket. You can see right there um, that it's lined on the inside and yeah, great piece here. It was men's XL. This I sat on this for some time, I'm not sure why, but it did sell, I waited for that buyer. Uh, I didn't accept a lower offer, um, too, I mean too low of an offer, but when the offer came in for 32 plus shipping, that was close enough for me. So it's out there, Duluth, great sale. I used to pick up athletic shorts all the time, and now I'm really picky. If I'm getting like a sports team, I'm making sure that it's a team that it is a consistently popular team. You know, Kansas is one, and you can see Kansas here on this set of shorts. 
um, North Carolina, Duke, especially if we're talking about basketball. Um, those are some like really hot teams, Kentucky, um, Ohio State. I mean, there are others that I could go on and bore you with, but I always make sure that there is a fan base, and Kansas has a really good fan base. They're consistently good season after season. So I knew these would sell. I picked these up at the same time that I picked up that Bugle Boy hoodie at Goodwill Benz for less than a buck since they were less than a pound, and I ended up flipping these for full asking price of $28.83. I will tell you though that when I'm looking for basketball shorts like this, I want Nike, Adidas, Under Armour. I want the big brands. I don't want Coliseum. I don't want Russell. Those brands I stay away from. They just don't have significant resale value. Lauren, Ralph Lauren, Corduroy Blazer. I love picking up these blazers. And as you can see here, there's the tag on the inside. It had a really cool like paisley pattern on the inside of the jacket. I picked this up and flipped it, I believe, for $40. Yeah, $40, including shipping on this item that I paid about six bucks for at Goodwill. Now, we are in the winter, and just keep in mind that if you're watching this during the spring or summer um, season, then they may not sell as quickly, but um, right now I'm picking up blazers and flipping them for great money on eBay. Tiger Woods, he is a well-known, and I'm sure many of you watching know Tiger Woods, have heard about him in either golf or other things. Um, these were Tiger Woods Nike golf pants, and I don't find these Tiger Woods pants that often. I usually find the Nike golf. See if I can find the logo for Tiger Woods. Uh, it usually says on the inside there, and you can see Tiger Woods collection. These pants were, I mean, you can tell from the picture, they're even really wrinkled. I didn't bother to throw them in the dryer to like fluff these up. I probably could have really quickly, but someone still came in and got these for a really good amount, $27 for something I paid $4 for. And you'll see that I put in the condition um, description here, excellent condition, just wrinkled. So these sold about a week and a half ago and they are gone. I posted a TikTok video on these boots. I was claiming that I would, could get fifty to seventy dollars for these boots, and someone said you'll never get that much for used boots. Well, guess what? I got that. I had a buyer come along and make an offer for fifty-five dollars, all in with shipping, and I took it. Uh, I noticed this when I picked it up, but these were like cut down the front and then restitched. And I honestly thought that was part of the, des the design of the boot, even though I've never really seen boots like that. But I got home and listed these and said that in the description. Looks like the front shaft of the boot was cut and reconfigured and sewn. Guy came along and made an offer. And after that offer came in, I said, did you see the description to see that these boots were um, adjusted in the front and re-sewn? And he confirmed that he had. He got the boots and left me positive feedback. So that's a tip if you have a flawed item, especially when it's majorly um, adjust, adjusted or majorly flawed. I don't know if I'd say flawed on this, but if it's just different than what the buyer may be expecting, always make sure if they're getting an offer that you confirm with them first so that you don't send it out, they get it and then go, hey, I didn't see there was a hole in the side and you save on possibly getting a return later. So Ariat Groundbreaker, Work cowboy boots were what these were, and $55 on these was a great flip. I did pay up on these, 22 bucks, so I only made probably $20 profit, but still on these, I will take that. That If they didn't have that um, that front shaft being cut and re-sewn like that, I would have gotten closer to between 70 and 80, but still made profit on an item that had been altered. That was the word I was looking for earlier. All right, let's look at another L.L. Bean piece. This was a men's medium sweater. It was cotton. I still got a really good price on this of $40.83. Buyer paid full price on this. No, sorry, $43.83. Last three I have for you today. This was a vintage Orvis piece. Take a look at that tag. That is an old vintage Orvis piece right there. And this was like a black vest, men's XL. Great size on that. I had this for a couple months and then finally it got, I got a best offer of $41 with shipping and took it. Buyer left positive feedback, so I won't get a return on this. This was a great sale. All right, let's show you one more item of dinnerware that sold. I was in the store and you can see this large 
I'm circling here like you can see that. You can see this large um, serving bowl that had a really cool like Italian uh, theme on it. And then it came with four plates and this whole set, the four bowl or four bowls, excuse me, the whole, the whole set of four bowls and the large serving bowl was $10 for all of that. I looked up comps in the store and that large bowl by itself sold for around $35 to $40. So I knew I had a really good hit right here. Buyer came in and made an offer for $65, including shipping. Definitely took that one. So on this piece, 65 bucks sold, $10 into it. I made about $40 profit. The brand on this is Highmark, and it's kind of hard to see right there in the bottom, but it's kind of blurry, but H-I-M-A-R-K, made in Italy. This one even had a couple of bowls that had some like chips around the rim and still this sold. So make sure to put in the pictures in the description. If you do sell pieces like this and you have flaws so that people can see it, you definitely don't want to get a return on an item that is heavier to ship um, and have to eat the cost on that. My last piece for you, the third Duluth of this video, it looks like I am three for three on Duluth pieces that are larger sizes. These were jeans, flex ballroom. There's the tag on the back. There is the inside of the band right there, flex ballroom jeans. And usually Duluth has their tag tucked on the inside down below, closer to the bottom of the pocket. So there you go, 50 by 30. These jeans are huge and I definitely got some good money on these. Buyer came in, paid full price, 39. 83 on these used Duluth jeans. And believe it or not, I think I was able to roll these up and fit them into a padded flat rate envelope for $7.52 shipping. So those are my what sold items from the last two weeks, the very end of December to the first week in January. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, would you do me a favor? Give it a thumbs up. Let me know that you liked it by clicking the button. If you have any questions about some of the items that I mentioned or reseller questions in general, as mentioned before at the beginning of this video, leave a comment and I'll definitely get back to you. So that's all I have for you today, guys. This is Jason saying thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed it. Have a great week and happy selling.